and welcome to this video which is about sewing the mock-ups for my red threaded 1860s corset. I started with the pattern as it comes and then made tweaks and adjustments until it fitted me as I wanted it to. So let's get started. I used a denim fabric which I pressed and folded so that there were two layers on the cutting board. I had already cut out and prepared the paper pattern pieces. I laid out the pieces needed for the mock-up and aligned the grain lines as required. I fine-tuned the placement by measuring the distance from the grain lines to the edge of the fabric and pinning to secure. Then I cut out the pieces with a rotary cutter. I transferred the markings. I pressed the centre fronts and centre backs, folding the facings underneath. And then I cut and ironed back the openings for the bust gauze or gussets on the front pieces. I'm not going to show very much construction in this video, as this is about fitting and I'll deal with the construction in the video about making the final garment. But I do want to show the bust gauze, as it's something a little different. After securing at the bottom, I then pinned up either side, keeping to the 10mm seam allowance. I then top stitched using a 2.5mm stitch length to allow easy removal if required. Then I pinned on the second gore and stitched it as well. Then on the other front piece, I inserted the third gore and the fourth gore. You can see how much volume the gores add. And it was slightly confusing, so just note that we want the bust gores to have the front edge towards the apex of the bust. Then I attached the side seams and pressed them flat. And attached the hip gores and then the back lacing panels. As this was a mock-up or toile, and I expected to have to make several iterations, I didn't want to sew in a busk each time. Instead, I made busk strips and I'll link to the video on making them above and in the description. I used one line of stitching, no back stitching, and a 2.5mm stitch length. And I also applied a pair of lacing strips. From here, I added the lacing. Then it was time to tape in the bones. For this mock-up, I tried spiral steel on one side and synthetic whalebone on the other. I used my nails to really press the masking tape down and into the corners to keep them secure for the fitting. The bones don't have to be the perfect length, but unlike I have here, it's better if any overhang happens down over your hips rather than up into your underarm.
So here's the first mock-up. I'm really happy with it, but we do need to make a few changes to get it to fit a bit better. I'm going to increase the bust scores to increase the size of the bust. Make it a bit higher, either from the waist, bringing up the start of those gores, or possibly to the top. And I want to try both just to sort of see how that goes. I'm going to increase the hips as well because they're feeling quite tight at the moment. The bone channel on the hips is also a bit weird. I'm not sure what I've done there, but we can make it work. And we need to adjust the hip size first anyway. And then after that, I might also add some to the back panels as it's quite a lacing gap at the moment. But I want to make the other changes first to see where that gets me. I removed the bones from the synthetic whalebone half. Then unpicked the lacing and busk strips. I straightened the waist, then used a large metal ruler and my rotary cutter to cut parallel to the waist. I spread the pieces out by one inch and cut off a piece to add in. I pinned that to the lower half, stitched it down, and then repeated to the upper half. I cut down the middle of each bust gore, and I put a few slashes into the hip gore as well. I cut off more fabric and divided it into gore shapes. I stitched down each piece to one side of the slashes, so that on the body I will be able to rotate and pin it to where it needs to sit. I reapplied the busk and lacing strips and the bones and was ready for the second fitting. So this is the side, I've lengthened the waist, I've slashed the bust and hip gores, and we'll adjust them now. This side is as per the original apparently. And I think already I'm liking the feel of having the longer waist, so I think that's the way I want to go, rather than just increasing the bust. But we'll see, we'll see. Might start with the bust. So I've pinned them there where it's sitting comfortably, um, but what I'm trying to do is keep this side um, bone a bit like the side of a bra. So keeping all the breast flesh in front of it is sort of the aim. Might need to sit back very slightly on the real one. Um, but that's the idea. Have that in there and then need to support. So I might pull this in just a little bit more so it's more of a shape than a shape. Okay, so I think as a preliminary adjustment for the bust, for the bust, that sort of, yeah, I'll we'll let this out so this can sit a bit more comfortably. Um, but first, let's have a preliminary look at the hip. So what I noticed when I put it on is really all that space is back here. So that probably explains why the bone channels were going a little bit kooky. So I've pinned the front three and there's a little bit of a triangle added into the very front just to get a little bit more room in there. The second one is pretty much as it is. Uh, we don't, I don't think that's a place we do need additional room. A uh, tiny bit to the third one. Most is the fourth and I can't reach to pin back there. So I'm just going to mark it on. So that's not an aesthetic process, but just marking where that is. And then uh, it's iterative. So it's okay that that doesn't seem perfectly precise. We'll see how it goes. So I'm going to slash the gauze now that we've seen what it's like over here. And I'll slash the hips, but I'm going to put more slashes in the back on this side. It's my plan. <sighs> here we are. I slashed the bust and hip gauze and had a bit of a play with this side, but I've decided I like the waist extension and the way that 
this bust core development's going, so I'm going to go with this side for bust and waist. So now we've just got to investigate the hip a little bit more. I pin them on so that they sit smoothish. I think there's a little bit too much room in there now, so I just need to tweak it slightly. So I've now adjusted, it's a bit rough, but I think it's given me idea of where I need to go for the next iteration. So this is as far as I think I can alter with this mock-up. The plan is to alter the pattern now, altering the bust gauze based on this side, the waist based over here, and the hip gore from over here. And I'll also add about half an inch to either side of the back. I removed the busk and lacing strips to enable a clear view of the changes required. My first step was to add in that inch at the waist, perpendicular to the grain lines. For the bust gauze, I marked the amount of fabric that I had added in. Then I quartered my pattern piece and manipulated it to mimic an average of those amounts. I stuck it to a piece of paper and cut out my new pattern piece. It was the same process for the hip gore. Then I repeated the construction process as before. I taped the bones in securely and it was ready for the third fitting. So here we have 12-2. So I'm now happy with the length of the waist at the front and I really think I'm happy with the hip gore as well. A downside of having lengthened the waist is that now at the side under the arm it's just a little bit high so I want to drop that by about a centimetre. As far as the bust gores go we've definitely made progress but I think there's still a little bit of tweaking required. The shape isn't quite right and I'm getting a lot of ripples at the side. So the next step is to make some minor tweaks to this twirl, bringing it slightly down under the sides and fiddling with those bust gores. I think I'm going to bring them back to a bit, a bit more smooth after all. Not completely triangular, but just a little bit more tapered in their shape. I started with a traced version of bust gore number two and used a French curve to smooth and lengthen. Then I added seam allowance. Here we can see the difference between pattern pieces number two and number three. Then I lowered it at the side, under the arm. So this is number three, and it's sitting very smoothly. I'm happy with it. Overall, compare it back to number two where it's got this sort of slight weirdness going on and the creases in the pattern. This side is not completely creaseless, but it's sitting a lot more smoothly. Now, and I guess also under the arm, it's sitting a lot more comfortably. Just dropping it by that little bit was enough, but I do need to stitch those stitches at the side seam again. But yes, happy with just that little bit of a drop. And then I think I'm happy with how it comes up at the front and the back. I just need to raise this part of the uh, main front pattern piece to match that extra centimetre. And then that'll be comfortable. Just a little bit gapy at the top is one thing. So I'm thinking... And if I just get it over like half a centimetre, 
looking a little bit ruffled, so I think I'm not sure that pinning is going to tell me all I need to know at this fine tuning time. I might try that just very slightly bringing it in. One final thing. Now that we're getting down to real fine tuning, the side stream isn't sitting completely vertically because we've added room to the bust. And as this is often the case for me, and this is not the angle to see it, but at that top area there, that often gets tight on me. So I'm thinking I might add a little bit of room into there. So the adjustments made there was to this side of the front bust gore. So I think we're at a point where, yes, I want to differentiate the front and side bust gores. So I think it's sitting better at the top, but it is, if we see, pulling slightly in there. You know, compare it to that side, it isn't. So I need to just smooth that line out a bit. Um, so that'll be the next step. So I think I'm happy with the side bust gore because that's sitting a lot smoother, relatively smooth, whereas that is significantly more crinkly. But just still tweaking this front bust gore. Okay, the other change was that I added in a little bit to the side back panel on this side. So you can see there. This little addition. So we did this because the side seam was angling back. So, and I often need to add a little bit of room to the top of my corsets just for the shaping. So I added a little bit and it's sitting better now. Not perfect, but better. I also want to take out a little wedge out of the side back panel above the waist and move the bone that's sitting similarly to a bra underwire at the side a little bit further back. I unpinned the back seam to be able to put in the dart to check the fit of taking the wedge out of the pattern. Then I reattached the back. And here is bust gore 3A, which has been taken in just slightly along the side edge closest to the busk. And that line was smoothed with a French curve. I added a bone at the side and moved across the bone next to the bust and added a second one there. So things that have changed. I've put in the new bust gore at the front, so leaving the side one the same, but updating the front one. And I think I'm happy with that now. It seems to be sitting calmly. It'll need a slight trim at the very end, but that's okay. As far as pattern pieces go, I'm happy with that. Other thing I did was tack in there. So if we see on the other side, it gets creased there. So I'm very happy with my adjustments to the back panel. And then the other thing I did was readjust the bones on this side. I moved this bone back and it's a lot more comfortable. Okay, so I think, actually, shape of corset is good. I traced out the pattern pieces and incorporated some adjustments, with more to follow now. The side back piece, which had been increased at the waist, has now been tapered as per the dart, and spread vertically to give more space in the upper back. I decided to leave the exact bone placement on the hip gore until I make the final garment, as it was a bit tricky. Let's look at the front facing piece. I wanted a wider one than came with the pattern, so I traced it off my front piece. I increased the height of the front at the bust gores and used a French curve to smooth the lines.
and then updated the front facing. I evened up and lowered the side seam. And with that, my fitted corset pattern was finished. And that's the process. I've now fitted my red threaded 1860s corset and adjusted the pattern ready to go. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you'll join me again next time. Goodbye.